Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. So ever since its release, the Elegoo Saturn has been very intriguing to me for its massive build volume when compared to some of these smaller resin printers. One question that really stuck in my mind was, even with this large build surface, can this printer produce the same quality of prints as these smaller printers do? And that's what I intend to find out today, along with the regular unboxing and demonstration of this printer right here on Southpaw Workshop. Thanks again to Banggood for providing this model for me to test and to review. If you are interested in anything 3D printing related and you are willing to wait just a little bit extra time for shipping, you can find great deals on Banggood.com for all of your 3D printing needs. Please check in the description below for links to all the products that I use in this video. Now, on to the review. This box is a bit bigger than the ones I'm used to. This printer is packaged in the same manner that I have seen with most resin printers. This one has some added reinforcement along the edges in the corners. It's a nice touch to ensure that the unit isn't damaged during shipping. A box containing the accessories and tools is located outside the printer, and under the printer lid, packed in foam, you will find both the build platform and the resin vat. Both the resin vat and the LCD screen have a protective film to be removed before use. First impressions of this unit are very positive. The base has an all-metal construction, as does the resin vat and the build plate. The printer uses a beefy aluminum build arm, supported by two linear rails. The vat has screw heads protruding at each corner. These screw heads interface with corresponding dimples in the printer base to lock the vat into place. This helps you locate the holes for the thumb screws quickly and easily. I'm not a huge fan of these thumb screws. They are really long and they take a while to cinch down. They also come completely free of, from the resin vat, so I foresee dropping these either on the floor or into some resin from time to time. I would prefer shorter thumb screws that are captive to the resin vat when unscrewed. Here is what comes in the accessory kit. A USB drive containing software, manuals, and test files. A power supply. A paper manual. A nice, sharp putty knife a good set of side cutters, a small tool kit with some spare screws, some disposable gloves, resin strainers, a nice plastic scraper, a couple of masks, and a card to assist in leveling the build plate. The Elegoo Saturn has a build volume of 192 by 120 by 100 millimeters which is actually over four times the volume of the Mars 2 printer. It sports a 4K monochromatic screen that can cure resin at around 2 to 2.5 seconds per layer, depending on the resin being used. Around back of the printer, you will find a couple of cooling fans, a power switch, power jack, and an ethernet port. More on that ethernet port later. The touchscreen has an interface very similar to the Mars series of printers. It is easy to read and simple to navigate. Here, I am raising the Z-arm so I can install the build plate in preparation for leveling. First, I need to remove the protective film on both the LCD screen and the resin vat. To level the build plate, I loosen the screws on the ball joint assembly. I press home on the touchscreen and let the build plate settle on the provided card. Once it has properly homed itself, I then hold down the build plate while tightening the screws on the ball joint assembly. Now that I have finished leveling the build plate, I want to test the screen to make sure it is working properly. To do that, I grab a sheet of printer paper and lay it on the LCD. Then I run a full screen exposure just to make sure everything is even and there are no dead spots on the LCD. Time to print. This vat is so big that I was afraid I wouldn't have enough of my Anycubic Standard Black resin. So I mixed it with my leftover Anycubic Standard Gray to make a nice dark gray color. I decided to take full advantage of the larger build plate 
and at the same time see if the printer is able to reproduce intricate detail when fully loaded down. So I took all three of my test models and put them together on the plate to print at the same time. All that is left is to load the sliced file onto the printer via the provided USB and let the printer do its thing. All three models printed successfully, so after a quick clean and isopropyl alcohol and a trip through the UV curing box, this is what I ended up with. I was pretty amazed with the results. To think that something with such a large build volume can produce this amount of detail, it just amazes me every time. This is probably the best Amerilabs town I have printed to date. Pretty much every detail is there in perfect fidelity. The Wood Elf Warrior and the Mandalorian models are also amazing in the size and clarity of detail. I like miniatures and all, they're fun, but what I'm really into is prop making and cosplay. The Elegu Saturn will help me build some props now that I was only able to make previously with my FDM printers. Now I should be able to print and go straight to paint with minimal sanding time in between. Let's make a prop right now. I found this Loki crown on Thingiverse that I really like. I set it up in Chitu box and sliced it but this time, instead of saving the file, I plugged an Ethernet cable into the rear port of the printer and selected the network sending option in Chitubox. I selected my printer's IP address in the drop down menu and then clicked the little send button and, well, the slicer appeared to be doing something, but eventually it just froze and quit. I tried it a second time and after several minutes I got an error that the printer wasn't ready. Finally, after the third try, the slicer asked for confirmation that I want to send the file to the printer, and the printer started on its own. With the first half of the mask done, I tried to network print the other parts and again it took three tries to get it to successfully print. I could have placed the file on a USB and had it printing within a minute, but instead it took almost a half hour and some failed attempts to get it to print over the network. I think I'll be sticking to the USB method from now on. What I like about the Elegu Saturn. Large build volume. It is not only the build volume that makes this 3D printer so impressive, it is the incredible level of detail achieved in that build volume that makes it stand out. Outstanding build quality. The all metal construction from the base to the resin vat to the build plate gives this printer a very substantial feel and proves that you don't have to cut corners on materials to make a competitive product. I mean, even the tools provided are of a much higher quality than the competition. Everything you need, nothing you don't. I like how this printer focuses on one task, printing. It doesn't include air filtration or any other gimmick that could have potentially distracted Elegoo from putting out a quality product made with quality materials. I can add air filtration or special lighting or anything else after the fact if I feel it is needed. What I don't like about the Elegoo Saturn. The Ethernet port. The Ethernet port would be great if it worked reliably, and even then transferring files would need to be quicker in order for it to add any value to an already great printer. While mildly convenient and amusing, I'm not shedding a tear about the poor functionality of this feature. Poorly designed thumb screws. I'm really splitting hairs here, but I prefer a set of thumb screws that stay attached to the machine while working on my resin vat. Anything that can be removed from the printer can also be dropped on the floor, dropped into the resin vat, or even lost. 
There are other manufacturers out there that have better systems for securing the resin vat to the printer base. And that is the only minor upgrade I would suggest Elegoo considers for their next generation of printer. I am super impressed with this printer. I was willing to accept a bit of quality loss with a larger format resin printer, but the Elegoo Saturn has proven that you can have a large build volume and still maintain the same quality as the smaller 3D printers out there. This printer is going to make a great addition to my arsenal, and I can't wait to see what else I'm going to be able to do with this machine. So as you can see, I'm a pretty big fan of this printer. The fact of the matter is, with this particular crown, is that I printed it off the printer, glued the pieces together, one coat of primer, and one coat of paint, and it turned out pretty awesome. So does this mean that I'll be replacing all of my FDM printers with this one resin printer? Probably not. The range of materials available in FDM printing is still versatile enough for me to keep it around in order to make functional parts and larger items even larger than what this is capable of making. At the same time, I'm happy to be able to use this now to make smaller prop pieces that require minimal sanding and very little prep work in order to make them look awesome, like this guy right here. So if you're interested in getting an Elegoo Saturn of your own, maybe to fulfill your own glorious purpose, Go ahead and click in the link in the description below and it'll take you to banggood.com to order your own for a great price. I really hope you enjoyed this review video. If you did, go ahead and throw it a like and consider subscribing to not miss out on any future content that I may release. The simple act of liking and subscribing doesn't cost you anything, but it does help my channel out a lot. If you feel like I've missed anything in this review, go ahead and leave your questions and comments down in the comment section below. I read all comments and I respond to most of them. I want to thank everybody for watching this video to this point. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.